less than the angels. A little less than the angels. We're going to be in Hebrews. In fact, I think we're probably going to be in Hebrews for a few more Sundays. But Holy Spirit kind of leads me in the direction I think He's going to. We're going to be in Hebrews for a while. Hebrews has been on my heart mind for several months now. And of course, finally got us here to this point. You know, uh, just keeping in what... Uh, the Lord's been teaching us here as of late. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, we learned that uh, you know there's that battle that goes on in our inside us. It's just uh, we're outnumbered two to one, and we're already fighting that spiritual battle inside, the spirit against our flesh and our, and our mind and, and things of that nature. But we also have an external battle that we don't think about too much, and that is this the uh, uh, the the fight against principalities. Of, of spiritual principalities. We are at war at all times, on every front. It's not just inside. And I may have mentioned last week that uh, that the temptation, you know, the devil gets off pretty easy. He, he, I mean, uh, actually, he gets to blame a lot of times. We blame him. <laughs> when actually, it's just our, ourselves. That temptation is, is just right within inside of us, and we usually bring it up ourselves, and, and he don't have to do much of anything. But we tend to blame him, and if we don't blame him, then as we learned last week, God forgive, we blame him. Well, I'm going to, to this week, guys, what the Lord put it on my heart is to maybe see how, God forgive, we get, we get to that point where sometimes we do blame God. How can we get, how do we get to that point sometimes? And I believe, this is just going back to uh, several months ago, a, a message that the Lord put on my heart that, you know, when we bring, try to put, uh, bring God down to our level, we try to put him in this little box that he don't fit in. Not just that he doesn't fit in, but he's not going to go in there. All right? You can't put him in there. There's no way. You cannot bring God down to your understanding. We have to be looking at him and, and try to figure him out by his understanding, by his word. Amen? If we lean on our own understanding, we go wrong. They lean on the, lean on the word of God. But uh, this is... The, the, the book of Hebrews, it, it doesn't have a, a... First of all, there's not a... Uh, uh, there's not a, a, a Hebrew... There's not a, a Hebraic state or something or a or church that this is written to like a lot of the, uh, uh, the epistles are written to churches. This is written to the Christian believers. I'm, I'm talking about the, 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 the Hebrew Judeo-Christian. Those who are, who are Jews who have uh, died to the old covenant and they're alive to the new covenant in Christ. They are Christians. Now they were going through some persecution and uh, because of that persecution, uh, a lot of the, uh, the, the Jews were falling back to their old ways because of that persecution. And the book of Hebrews is written for them to just strengthen them and to, uh, to show them how they're going wrong and to just to, uh, to embolden them to carry on with the Christian faith and don't fall back on the old, on the old words. You know, we face persecutions as well. And there's many things that uh, can lead us uh, back to our old way of life too. And I, I believe that uh, Hebrews is, to me is kind of a, it's almost like a constitution for Christians. It's almost like that. That's the way it's written. But it starts out in chapter 1. It starts, uh, uh, and the writer of Hebrews, let's spend just a little bit of time on that. Just real. I, I've heard uh, scholars argue about who wrote the, the book of, of Hebrews. And uh, my two cents is, first of all, I thought it was Paul for a long time. But then I got the noticing that, uh, uh, that, that uses the inclusive words like we, us, and, and things like that. Well, that's more like Luke's right. But Luke was a uh, Luke was a uh, he was a, a Gentile. He wasn't a, he wasn't a, a Jew. So he was he was a Gentile. And uh, so I'm not sure. I think it was just a plurality. I think you had more than one writer. I believe that's why in chapter two, verse one, it starts out saying we, and then later on in many different places, like in uh, uh, chapter uh, chapter five, verse eleven, it says we again. You know, this uses those inclusive. I believe it's just a group of maybe even just apostles, Luke, Paul, maybe some others, 
uh, and, and I think it's more reminiscent to the Acts, and, and that was Luke writing. It's, you know, when he wasn't with uh, with Paul, then it would be he would talk about Paul in the like where Paul is. He's over there, but. Other times, he was with Paul, so he would say we and us and things like that. And it, you know, I, th I was thinking, anyway, that's another year and a half. It doesn't matter who wrote it, right? Amen? It matters that what we get out of it and what it's there for, amen? So we can argue about that kind of silly stuff until we're blue in the face, and many uh, scholars do. They argue about it, so if they can't figure it out, I bet I can't either. But uh, I'm just going to... Uh, we, we just need to learn from it and move on. Amen? Alright. Verse, I mean, chapter 1 is it, it, uh, the writers of Hebrews, uh, they're, they start talk, speaking about how uh, Jesus, the Son of God, is superior over the prophets of old. See, they're, they're using the Old Testament to, uh, to speak to these Jews because that's what they knew. That's what they know. You know, they, they knew it before they were saved. And it's, it's in in a grain in most Jews. It's, it's just ingrained in the, at least the first part of the Old Testament. But anyway, so he's using this. He says, you know, God sent those prophets and he sent uh, angels, but, uh, but uh, Jesus, even though he was made just a little less than the angels, he was still superior and over all of them. Amen. But he goes on into uh, chapter 2 and he starts talking about uh, our salvation and, and things of that nature and, and mostly salvation and that's what we're really interested in. The verse, and I want to, uh, this, I know it's not up here on the screen, but the, the last verse of chapter 1 says, Are not all angels ministering spirits sent to serve those who will inherit salvation? I like the way they put that. These angels were sent, and we're going to come back on that just for a second because that's one of my rabbit trails. I already know pre, uh, predestined. I'm going to go down to this here in a second. But anyway, let's just start reading here in chapter uh, 2, verse 1. Then. Keeping that in mind, and the reason we keep that in mind because there's a therefore there. There, and anytime there's a therefore, you've got to figure out what it's there for, right? Amen. All right, verse 1. We must pay more careful attention. There is that close word. We must uh, pay more careful attention, therefore, to what we have heard, so that we we <laughs> do not drift away. For if the message spoken by angels was binding, and every violation and and uh, and disobedience received is is uh, just punishment. How shall we escape if, the, if we ignore such a great salvation? This salvation, which was first announced by the, by the Lord, was confirmed uh, by, uh, by those who heard Him. God also testified to it by signs, wonders, and various uh, miracles and gifts of the Holy Spirit, distributed according to, uh, to His will. I'm going to hold on, stop just a, a second right there before we get too, too far along. First of all, it said um, in verse 4, it talks about those, uh, uh, God also testified to it, to it. in other words, the, the coming of salvation into the world by His Son, by signs, miracles, and, and wonders. Guys, He did the same thing in the book of Acts. When the, it, it was signs and wonders when, when the, the Holy Spirit made His debut on this earth. To dwell in man's heart instead of with man, but in man. That happened in the book of Acts. It's a, it, we, we call that uh, 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 Pentecost, the day of Pentecost. Pentecost means 50. 50 days after he ascended, in, or, or that he had died on that cross, rose from the death from that tomb, 50 days later, he had ascended to heaven and sent back the Holy Spirit. Just like Moses went up the mountain 50 days after they were, the God de delivered them from, from, uh, 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 the Egypt, uh, from the Egyptians, from Egypt, he went up to that mountain and 50 days later he came down with the law. In the same way, Christ went to heaven to be on the right hand side of the Father and he sent back the Holy Spirit with the new covenant. Not that, that God would dwell with man any longer, but He would dwell in, in man's heart. Amen? 
Those are the kind of rabbit trails I like. But uh, I like them all. But, that, but that, that's a good. Anyway, so that's what that's what he's talking about right there when he says with signs and wonders in every aspect, every part of God. Uh, 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 starting his church, when it, whether it was the, uh, with the Jews, with the day of Pentecost, the, 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 the debut of the Holy Spirit, whether it was opening up uh, uh, the the the, uh, the church in, up to the to the uh, uh, the Gentiles, each time it was by signs, wonders, miracles. The Apostle Paul did many miracles through God, or God did through him. I should say, God did many miracles through the Apostle Paul. And other apostles as well. But that was for the beginning of the church. I'm not going to get into any of that stuff because we can we can uh, all agree and disagree on many different aspects of that. But let, I'll, I want to get to the to the crust of it. Go back just for a second. On, and and I, I mentioned it's not up here like I said, but on verse 14, are not the angels minister, ministering uh, spirits sent to serve those who will inherit salvation? I want you to think about, uh, you know, sometimes I feel sorry for the angels because, uh, <laughs> you know, we uh, their job is to take care of us. It's kind of like the, the nanny taking care of the rich kid that's going to get everything. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Or, in, or, or, the, or the servant taking care of the, of the prince or the princess or the prince mainly. Bringing them up. They have authority over them. They tell them what to do and things of that nature. But they're getting them ready to take the to become king and they'll be ruler over them. So they got to bring them up to take their job. <laughs> Ain't that something? Angels, they, they got it kind of bad like that, I think. But they understand what their their problem their, their deal is. But Jesus, it says, was made just a little less than the angels. Now, what does that mean? Well, don't feel too awful high and mighty of yourself because. We are made just a little less than the angels because what he's talking about, as we're going to learn here just in a little bit if I get to it, is that uh, he's, he's speaking about God coming down to this earth and being born as, as human. Humans are just a little below the angels. But we, as, as in through Christ Jesus, because we have the same inheritance of him, we have the inheritance of salvation. Angels don't have that. We're made in God's image. Angels are not made in God's image. He's, they have a, uh, they have a, uh, they have a, uh, uh, they have their flesh and bone. Is what the Bible says. Their flesh and bone. It doesn't speak of a spirit for angels. We have a spirit. We have a spirit because it's the spirit that God's spirit is able to uh, to grab hold of and, and interface and just mingle with. Amen. So you got to have the spirit in order for that to happen, and that's us. We're special. God loves us greatly. That that's the reason He made us that way in His image. But the angels, they're just uh, guys. We're, we're just made just a little under them, and that leads me to another point that I want to make. And, and maybe this is how we can, in our thoughts and our thought processes, maybe sometimes we can get to a point in our lives where we blame God for stuff. Because we, we bring Him down. And uh, have you ever thought about it like this as far as creation? Because in, in the beginning when God created everything, He starts out with the, with the uh, plants and, and animals and things like the oceans. And so, uh, have you ever thought about it? Well, you got your plants and your grass. Well, then the next thing you got is just uh, insects. They're a little bit over the grass. Amen, right? And that's a little bit. The grass is made there for them mostly to eat, stuff like that. And then after that, then you got your animals that crawls around and the birds and stuff like that. They're over the insect because they get to eat them. <laughs> Amen, right? So it seems like it's the way y'all had it figured out, didn't you? You know, you you got grass out there, it's gonna be used for this, and this is then the then the insects and then the uh, then you got the animals that eat grass and insects and we got animals that eat animals and things like that. And then we got the humans. Here comes the humans. And they're over all of that stuff. And we get thinking, well, you know, we're in charge of a whole bunch of stuff right here. And we're over all of that stuff. We're not, I mean, we're by far better than grass, amen? By far better. But God, then the next step is to think, well, how far under we are of God? How much, how far over us is He? Is that the next step? Because if we're thinking like that in our thought process, 
then it's easy for us, even if we're not even thinking about it really, or concentrating on it, maybe in the back of our mind we're thinking, well, you know, this is a hierarchy. Grass, insects, animals, humans, God. See, that don't, that's where we mess up. Right there is where we mess up, I believe. God should never even enter the, to that thought process. He has no beginning. He has no end. He is way more smarter than we are. And guys, here's, here's the deal. God is at a point of existence that none of His creation will ever reach. Ever. You see what I'm saying? So, think of it like that. Always think of it like that. Don't think of yourself. Let me tell you how this gets all jacked up. Uh, uh, Y'all remember Joseph Smith? Y'all know what I'm talking about? Brian shook his head. A lot of you, I think some of you, that's the Mormon church how it formed. The, the church of uh, Jesus Christ and the Latter day Saints. That's how it was formed. It's because that guy, well, you know what? He's thinking, well, we're just right here, we're just people, but sooner or later we're going to graduate into being a God, and God's going to put us in charge of another planet over here. You see what I'm saying? That messed up theology will get you messed up. Really. It'll get you believing something and inventing something that don't exist. There's not any one of us that's not backed up in Scripture that any of us would inherit anything like that. We have eternal life, and our job is going to be eternal, bringing glory to God and praising Him for, for an eternity. That's our job. Amen? It is not to have something great when we get to heaven. The greatness is going to be being the, to be in His presence forever. Amen. That's, that's what we look forward to. That's what we have to look forward to. But we, I guess what I'm trying to say, guys, is just uh, don't think of the hierarchy like that. Because in, in, compared to God, we're like an amoeba. We're nothing. I mean, He could just squash us and in the start of the house doing something. <laughs> I got a little bit of handiwork going on over here that they don't even know about. <laughs> I'll go pay attention to that. And just I'm done. With him. I'm so glad that he loves us so much that he's not done. With us. Amen. Verse five. It is not to angels that he has he has subjected the world to come. About which, you, about which we are speaking. But there is a place where someone has testified. What is man that you are, are mindful of him? The son of man that you care for him? You made him a little lower than the angels. He's talking about Jesus. Made him a little more lower than the angels. You crowned him with glory and honor. And put everything under his feet. Uh, something that, uh, and I know, like I said, it's not in the bit just before verse 14 of chapter 1, it says, uh, uh, sit, uh, uh, To which of the angels did God ever say, Sit at my right hand until I make your enemies a footstool for your feet? That's what he's referring to, guys, is when he says that, that, that I'll make his, uh, uh, put, put everything under his feet. See, everything is, is under Christ's control. Everything. You, everything. All of us. But there's something different about Christ the man. Something different than any of the other creation other than us is, is uh, about Christ. Is that He was human. He was human. He was made just a little less than the angels. Just like us. And there's good reason for that. Uh, let's, let's continue reading uh, in, in verse 8. In putting everything under Him, God left nothing that is not subject to Him. Yet at present, we do not see everything subject to Him. But we see Jesus, who was made a little lower than the angels, there you go again, now crowned with glory and honor. Because he suffered death. We talked about this suffering of a couple of a uh, uh, couple of Sundays ago, talking about us suffering. We're just not willing to suffer. It don't seem like we want the we want our cake and, and eat it too, but we don't want to go through the process of suffering through things to have victory on the other side. We want God to do it all for us. When you die for our sins, 
If you say we've got the victory through you, we'll just take care of it. I don't, I don't have to have to do anything. I don't want to have to, to exert myself. See, we don't want to suffer, but we've got to suffer. Amen? It's not easy. If it was that easy, God just leave us alone just right at the end to say, all right, save Jesus and, and come to heaven. Amen? No, we're supposed to suffer. We're supposed to go through things. We don't. When will we cry to God anyway? What verse is that? What's the name? Nine? I didn't see a verse of her. I couldn't figure it out, man. <laughs> but we see Jesus, who was made a little lower than the angels, uh, now crowned with glory and honor because He suffered death so that by, uh, by the grace of God He might taste death for everyone. See, it's not that, 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 he, that he, he died and came back alive, but He did that so that He could do it for all of us. Amen? It's not that He did it over and over and over. It's because of His strength and because of, of Him being, a, as we're going to see in, this in, a little, in just a moment, is that He is a, the, our great high priest. He paid the price, the final price, and through, his, through Him uh, having victory over death, we have victory. And by the way, everything that he has victory over, we have victory over. But like I said, we've got to suffer through. Amen? All right. In bringing many, son, uh, many sons of, uh, to glory, it was fitting that God, uh, for whom, whom and through whom everything exists, should make the author of, of the, should make the author of salvation perfect through suffering. So there you go again. Chapter 7. Both the one who, who makes men, uh, men holy and those who are made holy are the same family. Check that out. Because, because it says that, that because Christ was made just a little less than the angels and we're made just a little less than the angels, that we're from the same family. God didn't stay up there on his, on his throne. He came down to where his people was. And he, and he went through the same things that we have to go through. The temptations and things of that nature. Uh, so Jesus is not ashamed to call them brothers. That's us. He says, I will declare your name uh, to my brothers. In the presence of, of, of the congregation, I will sing your praises. And again, I will put my trust in Him. And again He says, Here am I and the children God has given me. The children God has given me is all of us that accept Him. We're all God's children. Amen? Verse 14. Since the children have flesh and blood, He too shared, the, the, uh, shared in their humanity. He came down. He went through the process of mom and daddy whooping Him. When he did wrong, things like that growing up. He suffered through two guys. The Bible says he was taught by his parents. Amen? All right. Since the children have flesh, flesh and blood, he too shared in their humanity. So that, that, so that by his death, he, he might destroy him who holds the power of death, that is, the devil. That's interesting to me. I didn't realize that. I never really stop, uh, stopped to think about it. But but devil does it. He has, the, it says it right there, he has the, the, uh, the power over death. You know me, I'll go back to the beginning in a minute, so this is briefly go there just for a second. What is it that... Uh, uh, First of all, Eve, I'm sure, you know, like I said last week, you know, the temptation's right here in us. And, this, and uh, there we are in the garden. And there's this tree over there that God said, don't touch this. Leave it alone. You can have everything in this place, but don't mess with that. Because you'll die. You'll kill you. So it just made, I'm sure it just made Eve, Adam, probably too, just think, oh boy, that's, that's probably some sweet stuff. If I had me a piece of that, man, I could just see that just, just, just the sweetness and the taste of oh, 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 just how good it's going to be. How, or it would be. Man, I can't have it, though. I just can't have it. And here comes the devil. You know, 
Uh, you know, he told you you're going to die. Nah, you ain't going to die. You're going to die. Mm -hmm. Take it. Take it. Take it. Take it. Right. Of course, you know how the story went. She did. And we did. We died. Didn't happen right away. But the devil brought death into the scene. It, we gave it over to him. The, the very, the, the very, very uh, uh, authority that we had, we started giving it over to him. In fact, the Bible says that, uh, that he's the prince of the air. You know, all this, I see all these storms that happen. But that's, uh, I believe that's the devil getting a little bit mad. And it's God that's allowing him to, to wreak a little bit of havoc the closer and closer we get to Christ coming back. He's the prince of the air. It's one of his names. He's the prince of the air. But, we were tempted and we did die. It was a slow process. You know, I, I, I forget how long uh, even Noah lived and that was uh, after the first, uh, God judged the earth and, and uh, uh, he lived for a very long time. I think at least 600 years old. 600 years. Uh, Methuselah, y'all know him, he lived 900 years. And just, uh, even some of Noah's kids lived 600 years. So we slowly, through a process of time, began to die. We got younger and younger. Uh, the days of, of, of our, the ending of our lives were younger and younger. You know, we know that uh, somewhere along the line we, we, uh, we dropped under that uh, 100 mark and, and it's, uh, it's just uh, uh, not... It's not common to see someone breaking that century too often, you know, just staying above it for long. But we did bring death into our into our existence. We did. So the devil, just like it says, he has the uh, he has control over that. Verse sixteen: For surely it is it is not angels he helps, but Abraham's descendants. That's us again. For this reason, and he's and the reason he said Abraham's descendants because he, like I said, audience is the Jewish believer. Uh, in verse uh, 17, for this reason, he had to had to be made like his brothers in every way, in order that the, that he might become a merciful and faithful high priest in service to God. In fact, in uh, verse 13 of chapter one, that is is quoting uh, when it says, "Sit by my right hand, and I will make a, your enemies a footstool for, for, a footstool for your feet." But he's, what he's, that is, uh, uh, he's talking about in the order of Melchizedek in that Psalm 110, if you'd like to check that out sometime. Uh, anyway, back to it. Uh, it's in order that he might be uh, become a merciful and, and, uh, and faithful high priest in service to God. And that, he might, and that he might make atonement for the sins of the people. Because he himself suffered when he was tempted he is able to uh, to help those who are t who, who are being tempted. Now I said last week, and I'm gonna I'm gonna start wrapping this thing up right in here. But I said last week, and I have to make a correction. I had, I had made a, a a remark that the, the devil didn't tempt us. Yes, he does, guys. That was the devil. That's his job is to tempt us. He did Christ when he was in that wilderness. He tempted him for the uh, when he was there for forty days. In three different ways he tempted him. Y'all remember? And in those three temptations, in fact, that's your homework, look it up. In those three temptations, just before he started his, his earthly ministry, every temptation known to man was wrapped up into those three temptations. Every single one. My point is this, is that Christ has went through, has been tempted of everything that we're going to be tempted for. He has the victory over those temptations because it, He never once gave in to those temptations. We do. We're imperfect. Amen? We do. I wish I could say I don't, but I do. And if you're lying if you say you don't. Amen? But we have to suffer through those moments. We have to come to a point where we say, I guess God needs to forgive us. Lord. We, uh, we know, I, I know you did this right. We're doing it wrong. Lord, show me how to do it right. Show me how to do it right. You don't get to have your cake and eat it too. You just don't. But the thing about it is, and I heard, uh, I, I forget the old guy's name that's, that's, I listened to, on one of the guys I listened to, uh, but he almost sounded like he's screaming when he's, when he's preaching. 
<laughs> it's just his voice is so ah, you know, he's always sounding like he's screaming. And uh, but uh, and I don't know why I could never remember his name. But uh, uh, but he's a black guy. He's a preacher. Y'all probably know what I'm talking about. But I can't think of his name. Who? Yes, Tony Evans. That's it. I don't know why I always get that wrong. Tony Evans. He was he was uh, talking about this uh, this week as I was working on my truck. I was listening to him, and uh, I could go on the, the rabbit trail right there, but uh, I won't. But uh, but he was he was talking about this very subject about when uh, uh, you know what Jesus went through for us. And I love like he, you know, he was a 33 year old virgin. That's one thing. But he was a 33 year old that never had a relationship with a woman. He'd been waiting unmarried for 33 years. God, you think you ain't been through it? He's been tempted by it. He's been through it. There's not anything that that you can say that this is strange to me that he hasn't been tempted by or something like that. He does. He understands what we're going through. Amen? He understands what we're going through. I'm going to... There was one rabbit trail that I didn't get into and I was going to and I'll get into it right now and then Brian, if you would come on up and we're going to wrap this thing up. <laughs> I mentioned before that angels are a, a, they're a ministering spirit. You know, I talked about Genesis when God created everything. And, and there's one thing that, that's always kind of bothered me. Because I wanted to just kind of scratch my head and say, hmm, I wonder what this is about. Y'all remember when, uh, uh, the, when what kind of went around? Maybe it still goes around, I don't know. That angels were neither male nor female. Y'all remember that? Do y'all do y'all believe that? I, I don't believe that. And here's why I don't believe that. Because I know that God is the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. And I know His order of, of, of operation according to His Word. And He always, in the beginning when He created everything, everything was made to reproduce after itself. Amen? The grass would produce grass. You can't plant this seed and get something different. You can't plant a grass seed and get a mighty oak tree. It produced after itself. That's the way God created all of us to do. To be fruitful and multiply. He created a, a ball of, of called the earth, a planet, in order for all of this, this, these laws that He spoke into existence to be housed and to do and to do that. And I just cannot see, guys. I mean, I don't have proof in the Word this morning, but I just can't see God stepping out of His uh, His normal, you know, the way He operates. And the fact that I know that the Bible says what made me start scratching my head about this thing. This is priests saying that. Uh, pastors saying that, that they that they're not neither male nor female because they saw the women folk down on this earth as pleasant to look at and they come down and wooed them the angels did some angels did and we had a whole complete race of people born that's one of the reasons I believe for the flood why that that uh, that 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 kind of thing out. And ladies, you want to know? You want to know where the burgers and stuff like that came from? That's about when they came from, right there. That's when they were thought of. It's, they had to cover themselves so that the angels would see how pretty it was, and be and be tempted. That's where that covering, the head covering, came from. Way back then. So I just want to correct that. But let me say what, guys. We are made just a little under the angels, but through Christ Jesus, we have an inheritance. We're one of Him, His. Amen. We can be called His brothers. Because he was a uh, he was a, a man just like we 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 come from the same uh, I mean we go through the flesh process to be born and things like that and be tempted and, and and like that. But guys, thank God that through Christ we can have victory over death. We can have victory over the temptations that we have. We resist the devil and he will flee. We resist those temptations and they will flee. They might, might come right back in about two more minutes. Amen? But if you re resist them again, they'll flee. And they start getting tired of coming back. Now, he's just going to tell us to go anyway. I ain't going to bother him. There's somebody over here that's saying yes. We'll go over there. <laughs> but right now, oh Lord. See, I want to be, that's the kind of person I want to be. And, and uh, 
that, that, that when I wake up in the morning, the devil's thinking, oh, the devil's not on my presence, so he's probably not the one listening to you anyway. So it's a demon folk. The network of, of, of demons. He's not on my presence. Can't be. When I wake up in the morning, he says, oh, Lord, he's fixing to open his mouth <laughs> and start praying. That, see, that's, a, that's the way I am in the morning. The first thing I, when I, first thing when I wake up in the morning is, is a prayer. It may be short until I get up and, and, and get up and, and, uh, and become aware of myself I go before the Lord and pray. I mean, really pray. But uh, I think the devil released his little minions. Oh, Bobby's about to wake up. <laughs> I want to listen, but I don't want to be in there. <laughs> I want to hear, but I don't want to be in there while he's praying. Guys, I'll tell you what. The, the, what this speaks of, and it, and it started out in chapter 2 talking about that that uh, uh, that uh, that salvation. You know, that great salvation. If we go through, there's a punishment that if we go through and ignore that great salvation. Because Christ came to die for all of our sins, for the entire world. And it is a shame for us to go through life, maybe even knowing who He is, because every demon in hell knows who Christ Jesus is. Everyone. So, my point is what I'm trying to say there is that uh, do you, do, does He know you? Does He know you? Because it's not that we know who Christ is. Like I said, every, every evil spirit knows who Christ is. Fortunately, they probably know him better than a lot of new made Christians do. It's not that you know who he is, it's that he knows who you are, and that you know where he is, and that's in your heart. Amen. I want to give you the opportunity to ask Christ to come into your heart. If you if you're that person that I started praying for earlier and, and others that but we prayed for you in the back even before we came out here and uh, and out here in our circles. God, if you came into this church and you had that emptiness in your heart, and if you can't describe what's missing, you just know something's missing. The only thing that's going to fit there is God's Holy Spirit. And you received that by asking Christ to come into your heart. Through His sacrifice, you received salvation forgiveness of your sin. Every head that bowed, every eye closed, if you'd like to ask Christ to come into your heart, just say a simple prayer like this and mean it from your heart, guys. Just admit to Him, Lord, I'm a sin. And right now, Lord, I turn from that sin. Lord, I'm agreeing that you're right and I'm wrong. I want to do things your way. So Jesus, I'm asking you to come into my heart now. I receive you by faith into my spirit. I believe you died on that cross for my sins. But you rose back to life. And you're living in me now. I recognize you as my God, my Lord, and my friend. And from this moment forward, I'm serving you. In Jesus' precious, precious name. You said that prayer for the first time, and like I say every Sunday, more than that, that you felt the presence of God begin to, uh, to to feel that emptiness you came in here with. Would you please come and see me right after services? That's the most important decision you can make in your life, and I want to talk to you about it. Amen. Let's go for the Lord one last time. Father God, we love you so, so very much. Father God, show us how to be doers of your word, not hearers only. We know that we're in the last days. We've been in the last days for 2,000 years, but Lord, we're closer now than we ever have been. We know that. You could come right now, this very moment, before we even finish this prayer. So Lord, show us how to be the lights that we need to be. Then. Your ambassadors for a lost and dying world. Father, show us how to mingle. Give us the words. Give us the opportunity. In Jesus' precious, precious name. Amen. Alright guys, we love you. We'll see you next week.